Hello, thanks for joining us. It is Aaron Carreno, and today we are with the Wisconsin Veterans Chamber of Commerce. And joining us today is Saul Newton and Adam Brotz. And uh, Adam, could you introduce yourself, your title with the organization? I am the Programs Director for the Wisconsin Veterans Chamber. Okay, and Saul? Uh, my name is Saul Newton. I'm the Executive Director of the Wisconsin Veterans Chamber of Commerce. And so today we have uh, an exciting program launch that we're talking about. Tell us about Invest in Vets. So uh, Invest in Vets is a platform that we have developed uh, to assist employers who are looking to recruit and retain veterans, military service members, and their families to help grow their workforce. Uh, we know that uh, Wisconsin is facing a critical talent shortage. Uh, there, frankly, aren't enough uh, people to fill the positions that a lot of employers are looking to fill. And more and more employers are recognizing the value that uh, veterans and service members and their families can bring to their organization in terms of training and skills and in values that make them assets in the workplace. And so this program uh, was developed to really encourage employers to make that investment in uh, folks who have served in the military and, and those who have served alongside those in the military uh, to help them reintegrate back into the civilian world with meaningful careers once they leave the military. And I imagine that's a little bit of a difficult transition to go from that and then to get these opportunities. Where can people, what's the first step for uh, this program and in getting involved? Well, I think it's important to note that this is overarchingly a certification program, uh, but it's so much deeper than that. There's a lot of certification programs out there, uh, veteran-friendly employer certifications, gold star this and thumbs up that. And, and what really sets this apart is that there are a large amount of stringent requirements, and this is a very high-level certification uh, and not everybody will just be able to get it. And there are a lot of for-profit certifications out there where uh, people pay the money and they get the badge that says that they're veteran friendly or they may or may not be. And, and in our case, this is a, a nonprofit institution. There's not any money behind this. We are really just evaluating businesses' ability to engage, support, and retain a veteran workforce and military families, military spouses as well in the workforce. So uh, the first step is to go to uh, wiveteranschamber.org, uh, click on the Invest in Vets button, and if you own a, a company and you're veteran friendly, you can uh, click on our scorecard and just yes or no questions and, and fill out the, the evaluation form to see where you stand. And, and the other thing in that case that sets us apart is if you don't necessarily meet the standards to get Invest in Vet five star certified then we will, will engage with you, we will support you, we will help you put processes in place to better support the veteran community. If you do match our stringent requirements to become five-star certified, uh, then we of course give you the badge and we celebrate that. Mm -hmm. So talk to us a little bit more about gaining those stars and how a business can go from not being quite there to being sure. right there. So uh, this program is really meant to help employers promote what they're doing to create welcoming and inclusive workplace environments because the transition going from the military back to civilian life is in, in some cases a difficult one. Uh, and employers play a really critical role in helping to smooth that transition process for service members and their families. So what we're looking for with employers who are truly welcoming and inclusive are things like uh, do they uh, have a have a commitment to hire and retain military veterans? Do they have peer support programs? Do they offer flexible scheduling or do they offer some flexibility to military uh, spouses who may have to spend time with a family member who's about to deploy or get activated? Uh, those types of things that are, uh, you know, very, I, I would say, um, low investment level it doesn't take a lot of money or a lot of time or a lot of resources to implement some of these practices in in a workplace all it takes is commitment uh and a willingness to make that investment and it really is an investment because when you when you do put some of these place these policies in place from supporting your employees from offering training and education and and community engagement opportunities that brings value back to your organization and really helps uh, businesses grow their bottom line. So if you are a business that is trying to check off, you know, all those boxes and become uh, gain all their stars, so to speak, what's the process for 
making that happen? I mean, how long does this usually take for a business to have the resources they need? Uh, it's, it's as I said, it's very uh, low commitment level. Low. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of resources to put in place uh, some of the things that we look for in a, in a veteran-friendly employer. Uh, so really, they can do it in, in as little as a few weeks. Uh, it's really a matter of educating employers uh, and letting them know what they don't know. And those who have made that commitment, making sure that they're being recognized as well, because uh, employers who are willing to make that commitment and are willing to make that investment are deserving of recognition. And that's what this program is all about. And I noticed that there is the value that there is going to be some marketing benefits and s some ongoing education to provided with these businesses as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we work directly with employers. We work with folks who are making hiring decisions to help them uh, create strategies and connect with uh, veterans and service members and families who are searching for career opportunities, uh, teach them how to uh, take the experience that those candidates bring to the table and apply them and see how they're relevant to their workforce. And again, overall, it really comes down to making sure that employers know how to be inclusive and welcoming of folks who have a military background into their organization so that they can be set up for success. You know, it, it's it's both ways, right? So you're a vet that's looking to get into a workplace. Uh, there's a little bit of a transition period for both the employer and for the vet. So this really brings those two together mm -hmm. and empowers the business and the veterans to be extremely successful in the workforce. Absolutely. And I think it's important to note that there are a lot of companies out there that are or want to be veteran friendly. They are or want to or are currently rather or want to hire veterans. They want to hire veteran talent or military family talent and have them engage in their workforce. Um, but they may not know where to start. They may not know how to speak that language and they, they may need tools and processes, uh, tools in their toolbox to close that gap or to bridge that gap rather. And that's where this and the Wisconsin Veterans Chamber of Commerce uh, comes in. And a lot of these changes, as Saul said, are, are simple things that may not seem like a big deal, like a line or two here in your employee handbook saying, in this circumstance, if your spouse is activated, you get a day here or this amount of time to support them on the back end. Very simple things that, that may seem like insignificant to an employer, but make a world of difference to a veteran and their family. Um, and that's, that's where this program, I think, uh, covers a lot of bases uh, that a lot of other certification programs or a lot of other companies that consider themselves uh, veteran friendly may miss the mark. Mm -hmm. Today we're talking with Saul Newton and Adam Bratz from the Wisconsin Veterans Chamber of Commerce. And guys, tell us from your experiences so far, talk to us about some of the success stories you've seen with the businesses who have implemented this. Uh, so part of the uh, part of this program includes a pledge uh, on the part of employers to hire uh, military spouses uh, for positions within their organization. And we've actually had employers in the in the few weeks since we've launched this program, uh, more than a, uh, employers have pledged to hire more than 100 military spouses uh, in the state of Wisconsin within their organizations. It shows that there's a real desire out there. It shows that there's a real need. Um, and our, our effort here, our intent is to uh, help bolster and, and support those organizations that are willing to make that, that investment. We've also had uh, commitments from employers to uh, offer internship opportunities to more than 30 veterans. Uh, again, just in a matter of a few short weeks since this program was, was announced. Um, and we're working directly with employers to help them uh, go through this application process, identify the policies, and the practices that they need to implement within their workplace. And we're already starting to get uh, employers who meet those qualifications and uh, are, are ready to, to kind of broadcast that to the world and make sure that veterans who are looking for opportunities know that those are the places that they want to go. So in, Invest in Vets is the program we are talking about today, just launched with the Wisconsin Veterans Chamber of Commerce. If you go to wiveteranschamber.org, correct, you can not only take the internship pledge, but you can also invest uh, in you're educating yourself a little bit more about the Invest in Vets program as well. Yes, correct. The uh, it's it's intended to uh, we're we're looking to educate employers to help them figure out what they don't know or or identify the areas that they may have overlooked in order to really attract uh, folks with a military background. Um, but again, then to offer the the um, 
recognition that they deserve uh, for putting those policies in place and making sure that uh, when there are uh, veterans or service members or their families who are looking for employment opportunities, they know where to go uh, to find employers who are going to really empower them and set them up for success. And we've been really encouraged by the feedback we've received from companies so far, uh, whether it be the amount of companies that have signed the uh, the veteran spouse hiring pledge or the number of companies that have signed the, the veteran intern hiring pledge uh, or just the amount of companies that have reached out and said, we want this certification or rather we just want to be good at hiring vets because that's what we want to do. Tell us where to begin. Um, and that to us is really exciting because then we get an opportunity uh, to give them the tools, like I said earlier, uh, to, to do what's right and to do it the right way and to make Wisconsin the best place for, for veteran talent and veteran employees and their families, uh, make Wisconsin the best state that there is. I think what's been most encouraging about this has, has been seeing that employers, uh, employers aren't just paying lip service. Uh, they're they're mm -hmm. really looking to uh, back up their their words with action, uh, and to make sure that um, you know they are following through on their commitment when they say we appreciate your service, we appreciate the service of our military. That they're backing that up with action within their own organizations and really living those values. What would you say, guys, are some of the top challenges that employers do have acclimating to having veterans in the workplace? Uh, I think first there's there's definitely a, a culture shift uh, in in a culture divide. Um, we're at a point in our in our uh, society really where fewer people uh, serve in the military than have ever served before. Uh, fewer people in the civilian world have a direct connection to the military than ever before, and so it really is kind of a foreign experience for a lot of folks uh, to to really think about what's it like to serve in the military. What's what's it like to have that experience in your background. Um, but then also to take that and apply it to a civilian, a civilian world, right? How does the training and the experience that you gained in the military apply to my business or apply to my position that I'm looking to fill? Uh, because I don't know what, you know, this specific ranker is or what this specific uh, position is. Uh, so as, as Adam said, bridging that gap uh, is probably first, uh, first and foremost the challenge that employers face. Um, and as we've talked about, the one of the other challenges is just not knowing what you don't know. Um, and that's what we're here to do is is provide that information uh, to make sure that employers, you know, have all the tools in their tool belt to attract the best talent out there, which are uh, folks who served in the military and their families. And I would say in addition, a challenge that veterans face uh, as they reintegrate into the civilian workforce uh, lies around, and I hate to use the word stereotyping, but there are some preconceived notions about the military and veteran community, especially by those that have no experience with it, um, that a, a veteran may only be experienced in one thing or may be experiencing certain things by virtue of their service uh, that may prohibit them from being effective in the workplace, which just simply aren't it isn't true in most cases. Uh, the Today's military is one of the most diverse uh, fighting forces and and not only diverse in the people that make up the the military and the different branches of the military but diverse in the different sort of jobs and roles and support programs that they have you wouldn't expect uh, somebody that doesn't have experience with military members wouldn't expect uh, somebody to have experience in communications or experience in food service management or experience in all these things that are not necessarily directly related to combat but those ancillary duties that are such a huge part of the military training and the military lifestyle and the military workforce um, so i think getting getting rid of those stigmas that accompany being a veteran is is part of what we try to do when we're engaging with companies um, and getting them to understand just the diverse training um, it's not just combat arms. It's office skills. It's it's uh, inter-office working environment skills. How do you use a copy machine to Microsoft Office? To how do you properly train somebody to to be an effective leader, uh, and and everything in between. So that that's one of the things that we see as as a big challenge. We see as from both ends, uh, veterans being able to express that they have those experiences and those skills by virtue of the uh, their service. And then also getting the companies to understand that as well. And so with Invest in Vets, you kind of take away that stigma, that naive approach that businesses do have going into 
even hiring veterans to begin with. Mm. The what we are what <clears throat> our goal with this program is really to uh, position employers so that they are best equipped to make decisions about who they're bringing into their workforce, and veterans and their families really possess. Um, you know, the the soft skills, but the necessary skills, the personal responsibility and discipline and, uh, and critical thinking and ability to work as a team and be task oriented and goal oriented. Those are the things that really make uh, take a, an organization from being good uh, to being great. Uh, and those are the skills that innately come as part of military, uh, as part of being in the military and military experience. And uh, we we want employers to be able to really leverage that and take full advantage of that because not only are they uh, helping you know empower those those service members and their families once they leave the military, but they're also helping to grow their business and grow the economy uh, by virtue of uh, working with these folks. Yes. I, Go ahead, Adam. Yeah. Oh, sure. And I think that's a really fantastic point. Uh, having a company that is veteran friendly and a company that actively seeks to engage veteran talent and their families that's not charity the, the the companies benefit so much from having veterans in their workforce up and down the chain uh from from senior leadership to mid-level management to to associate level and and everywhere in between and they benefit from getting that innate ability to be an adaptable uh leader and to be someone that can be uh, self-motivating and, and all the things that Saul described. It's it's not a it's not a charity case for a company uh, to hire veterans. Everybody benefits from that, and that's that's what we try to communicate with with both ends of the aisle. Yeah, just looking at some of these facts, according to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, veteran employees are the third most in demand talent source, only behind women and those with post secondary education. And with Invest in Vets. You know, you're also taking that military spouse pledge as well. So it's 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 both. So it's really a win-win. Correct. Yep. Yeah. What what we've seen is that um, you know it's really important to to provide those those supports and and provide that focus to service members and and veterans. But uh, if you're neglecting to really take the full uh, the full scope of the family unit, the military family unit, um, you know, you're really missing a critical part of of not only, uh, as we've been talking about, a, an opportunity for businesses and for employers, uh, but you're also leaving out a key component of what it takes to be successful once you leave the military. Uh, so for far too long, military spouses have really been overlooked in a lot of these conversations. And luckily, that's starting to change. And we're uh, really proud to be able to, to uh, lead some of that change and make sure that military spouses are being included in those conversations and also that they're being recognized for the unique skills and the unique value that they bring uh, to the table as well. Now, if you're a business that uh, wants to participate and get involved, I mean, I highly recommend doing this just right now. I mean, check out the website, wyveteranschamber.org and read. Would you say start off with reading a little bit about the Invest in Vets, the five-star program, and just in just kind of seeing and filling out the information to see where your business falls? You bet. I, it, it will take you about 10 minutes. Uh, if you're a business leader, if you own a company, or if you're an HR director, wiveteranschamber.org. Uh, so if you are a business leader, you own a company, or you're an HR director, go to wiveteranschamber.org. Uh, check it out. It takes all of about 10 minutes. And the first two requirements uh, to become Invest in Vet certified is to take the internship pledge and to take the military spouse uh, pledge. Each of those only take about a few minutes. You, you read it, you pledge, you make, you make a, a, a symbolic commitment uh, to hiring. And that's the, those are the first two steps. And you can use uh, go through the scorecard and, like I said, about another additional five minutes. So you're looking at a 10-minute investment to see where uh, to take the first steps and see where your company currently stands. And then additionally, businesses will be featured on the website as well in, a, in somewhat of a, well, in a, an employer directory rather. That lives online too, correct? Yes, correct. We uh, this will this will be really a gathering place both for employers to learn what they need to do and what uh, what they need to uh, implement within their workplaces. But it's also a place for veterans and service members to turn when they're looking for career opportunities, whether they've just left the military or they've been out of the military for a little while. Uh, it's a place where they can go to see where are the employers that are going to be the best fit for me or my family. 
uh, where I want to where I want to begin my next career. Well, I think we can we can kind of summarize this in a really positive way if by not only investing in vets, but as Adam mentioned, as we've talked about bridging the gap. Mm-hmm. And this is a great opportunity to do that. I want to thank you guys both for being here today. Uh, Saul Newton and Adam Brotz from Wisconsin Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Invest, invest in vets. The program is up right now. WIVeteransChamber.org. Thank you, guys. All the best. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you.